Like the power. But the question is, what is the power? You've got to discover what controls the system to really get through all the layers if you're going to try to build a better civilization and a future for humanity. Because we know the establishment that's taken control certainly uh, does not even see humanity in their future. And coming up later in the hour, I'll talk about the technocracy with Professor Griff, one of the founding members of one of the most legendary and still popular, one of the most popular hip-hop slash uh, rap groups out there, Public Enemy, pgriff.info, P and then Griff, for, for, for Professor Griff, dot info. And he's going to be with us for the hour today to take phone calls. And uh, I want to give the number out if you specifically have a question. It can be all over the map. That's what I love about the wild card aspect of this. We don't screen your calls. In fact, that's why people call in on whatever issue they want. But, but when I do say it's for a guest, it's for the guest. Address your question to him. 800-259-9231. Uh, 800-259-9231 800-259-9231 today. Uh, and he joins us. Of course, many of you also know him, even if you're not a connoisseur of some of the better uh, hip-hop and rap out there, like I've been growing up uh, in Dallas, Texas, uh, then you know him from the Obama deception that, that, that we were producing before Obama even got into office. And you know, he says, you know, just because you get a black president, people think everything's going to be all right. Well, no, it's not going to be all right. Just like a lot of conservatives think you get Bush in, he's going to save you, and he runs over you. Because it's not about that. It's about total control. They're now coming out, we're going to talk about this, with computers that are going to write the news articles and fully replace humans pre-programmed with an official story that then they write in different uh, variations. That's why the press corps won't even be needed. A virtual president, all of it. So now it won't be a president reading off a globalist written teleprompter. It will be a virtual computer program of the president. Toward the president won't have to travel. See, the new carbon tax will be the global prison where you can't travel anywhere. You have to get authorizations to travel. This is a nightmare. A nightmare, and they want us all fighting with each other over race, religion, all this stuff. And when they get people fighting over that, it becomes real. Even if you don't want to hate somebody, they hate you because of your religion or your race or what you look like or where you came from. So how do you transcend that? How do you get past the divide and conquer? Because if we don't do that, we're dead. It's the eugenics program, the extermination program. Professor Griff, uh, out of the gates, what do you want to talk about first today before we go to these phone calls. What is front and center uh, in your mind and your deep research and all the books you've got coming out that are so popular that are available, I should add, at pgriff.info? Um, first, I want to say thank you for having me on once again. As promised, we're back. Uh, we're back once again for the second time, and I want to thank you listeners since the last time. Um, the support, I received some things in the mail from some people, some further information, and um, it's a beautiful thing. So once again, thanks for having me. But the, the thing that's on my mind um, I received some information about a gentleman um, in the so-called uh, in, in hip hop or rap. Um, now, this particular gentleman, he uh, murdered someone simply because he thought this particular now this, this person that he murdered was his friend, and he thought if he murdered his friend, that it would kind of appease the, the quote unquote Illuminati, and he would be accepted in the Illuminati because he thought that this person would be his blood human sacrifice. Now this disturbed me, so I said to myself, what is it that I'm not saying to make this very, very clear about the Illuminati being 13 bloodlines? So I went back into the book and I said to myself, maybe I need to talk to, uh, to Alex about the 21 goals of the Illuminati, as mentioned in Dr. John uh, Coleman's book, The Committee of 300. And by the way, he laid out their whole plan. He was in MI6. Uh, I think he's even still alive, but he's hard to get on. He's been ill. Uh, we, we need to get Dr. Coleman back on. Is he still alive? Yes, he is. Guys, get him on immediately. I keep forgetting. He's really hard to get on. He hadn't been on in about five years. Uh, but, but get him on immediately. Uh, yes, let's go over from an MI6 guy who 20 years ago laid out everything. I mean, I've got to say, no one... Has, and there's so many great people like him that you just forget about because they're not out front and center. Break down what he says their 21 goals are. Um, number one, real quick. Number one is to establish a one-world government, new world order, with a unified church and a monetary system. Under the direction of this one-world government, uh, they began to set up its, its church back between the 20s and the 30s. Now, this is something that they would uh, con control. Right? They would set up a church... Um, to body and channel these particular beliefs that they would come up with. And these are non-religious beliefs. 
That's number one. Number two, to bring about the utter destruction of all national identity and national pride. And chime in any time you would like, which was the primary consideration um, if the concept of the one world government, the new world order, was to work. So these things go hand they go hand in hand to establish a unified church and a monetary system and to, uh, to break down national um, identity. This gives birth to this impenetrable biomicrochip that everyone on the planet, walking, living, breathing, have to accept the chip. And now they openly say they want the troops, and the troops are already getting them, by the way, the special forces. All of this that was unbelievable 10 years ago is now in our face. Please continue. Exactly. Number three, to engineer and bring about the destruction of religion, and more especially the Christian religion, with one exception, their own creation, as mentioned above. Number four, to establish the ability to control of each uh, and every person through means of mind control and what the big new Brzezinski called technotronics, I believe, which would create human-like robots and a system of terror which would, which would make... Uh, these things uh, come about and be acceptable by the people via the mind control. You walk through Newark Liberty Airport, you'll, see, you'll hear robots talking to you, giving you directions. Um, and they're just and conditioning you and getting you ready, exactly. Exactly. So, um, stalking you up, uh, making you, uh, what's the word I want to use, more pliant, so to speak, to get you to, to accept instructions and authority from, from robots. Number five, to bring about the end of all industrialization and the production of nuclear generated electric uh, electric power. By the way, he wrote this he wrote this more than twenty years ago in one of his first books. And look, the post industrial zero growth society. See that? Keep going. Yes, exactly. Um, now basically what they what they what they're doing is um, twenty years ago, it would almost think that okay, these things didn't didn't take place. What's the problem? Well, you and I both know that the men that are operating behind the scenes call themselves men of coordinates, and they will pass this agenda down to the next generation if they don't succeed in their particular lifetime. They never so give up. Right, well, exactly. They they don't. Um, the agenda does not stop. If you and I go on vacation to catch a little sun somewhere, um, if, if they do, this the machine world keeps going. Um, they wanted to bring this uh, into fruition through NAFTA and other organizations and, and other programs that they have already set in motion. So if you look at um, if you look at the war on terror, when it talks about when it talks about uh, destroying the Taliban and other organizations that they helped create, it says in this particular document that um, the U.S. in the wake of industrial destruction will either become opium, heroin, heroin. Or cocaine addict. This is what they plan are doing right now, unbeknownst to the troops that are fighting. Now I know the government is listening, so we don't want to get charged with sedition. We're reading a document put out 20 years ago um, by John, Dr. John Coleman, in the book "The Story of the Committee of 300." Number six, to encourage and eventually legalize the use of drugs and make pornography an art form. My question is. Does life imitate art, or does art imitate life? If you're going to make pornography an art form, and then make it an art form to whom? Your little babies, my little babies? How does that work? It was like you know, a nightmare. I was down in Galveston two weeks ago on a vacation, and the last day I was there, a convention of, of cheerleaders came, but it was little kids at a competition, and there were like 10-year-olds dressed like prostitutes everywhere, <laughs> And they were being rude to my daughters because they thought they were there for the competition. And, I mean, I was it was freaking me out. In fact, we even came home a day early. I mean, they, people are training their daughters to be whores. Wow. Number seven, to bring about depopulation of large cities according to the trial run carried out by Pol Pot, Pol Pot's regime in Cambodia. Um, and basically it says here, it's interesting to note that Paul Pot's genocidal plans were drawn up in the U.S. by one of the Club of Rome's research foundation and overseen by Thomas Indias. Now this is very critical. A lot of these things are done right from the United States of America. Number eight, to suppress all scientific development except for those deemed beneficial by the Illuminati. So if, 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 if 
if that is true, then we can roll our minds back just a few years ago to them, but not a few years ago, in and around the mid uh, 80s, when the electric car was given birth to, and they sat on the electric car. Simply because the uh, the multinational corporations that control the oil and the gas did not want the electric car to hit the streets just yet. So here we are, 2011, 12, and 13, just now in the electric car. You see, they killed the electric car because maybe it gets 85 uh, miles per gallon, so to speak, and they didn't want that on the streets yet. Absolutely. We've got to go get... On, on, on car lots, there are millions of, of gas-guzzling trucks and cars that are sitting there. Professor Griff's our guest. Stay there, sir. We're going to come back, finish up with the goals, and then go to your phone calls with Professor Griff, uh, one of the founders of Public Enemy, their minister of information, laying it out and reminding me about Dr. John Coleman. Wow. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cysts, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Professor Griff of pgriff.info, founder of Public Enemy, their minister of information, touring the country, about to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here uh, very, very soon. Uh, and he joins us right now. I promise we'll get to your calls in the next segment. He'll go with us a little bit in the next hour. He's been gracious to do that. He's speaking to a university after that at, I, I guess, three, so he's got some time. Um, I haven't even asked him where he's at right now. Uh, Griff, where are you right now? Right now I'm in Kansas City, uh, Missouri, at Missouri Western State University. You're in Missouri. Uh, awesome. Uh, There's a little bit of echo on your phone now. Do me a favor and try to talk right into the receiver. Yeah, it's a little muffled, but it, it, it's okay. Uh, just, uh, just, just keep rolling with this key knowledge from Dr. John uh, Coleman. This is real info uh, that you're laying out, and and, and I'd forgotten about it because it's it's 20 years old, uh, but and, and it's all coming true. Keep going. Well, I'll left off at number nine. Number nine to cause by means of limited wars in the advanced countries by means of starvation and disease in the third world country. The death of three billion. That's B billion. People by the 2050, uh, people they call useless eaters. As you and I talked uh, about, this is not useless black eaters. This is not useless white eaters. These are useless eaters, period. Because they're not going to differenti differentiate between you and I. All right, so useless eaters. The Committee of 300, the Illuminati Commission, by Cyrus Vance, to write a paper on this subject of how to bring about such genocide. The paper was produced under the title Global 2000 Report. And this is very critical. Uh, under the uh, accepted and approved by the actions of the former president, James Earl Carter. This is very critical. Um, and we need to note here, um, the big new Brzezinski was involved, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Number 10, to weaken the moral fiber of the nation and to demoralize workers in the labor class by creating mass unemployment. And not only unemployment, but underemployment. To the point where you're not going to be qualified because of the, uh, the, uh, the advanced technology dealing with robots. You're not going to be qualified to get a job. You're going to be uh, unemployable and jobs dwindle due to the post uh, industrial zero growth policy introduced by the Club of Rome. Here's the Club of Rome once again. Um, uh, these people plan to put this in effect and they've been doing it um, through the institutions like uh, Stanford Research and uh, 
uh, Catholic Stock Institute, as I mentioned in, uh, in my lecture. Moving down, skipping down to number 11, to keep people everywhere from deciding their own destiny by means of one created crisis after another, and then managing such crisis. We talked last time about the Hegelian dialectic principle. Uh, we talked about um, uh, this, this system that we're under, this, this two-party system, two wings of the same damn bird. I call them the Republicrats, the Republicans and the Democrats, all controlled by the same people. And then they manage these particular crises. I believe it was David Rockefeller who said we're on the verge of a global transformation. And we need, and all we need is the right major crisis, and the nations will accept the new world order. This is David Rockefeller. You're right, the right catalyzing event, and the nations will beg for the new world order. Exactly. So as the left challenges the right and squeeze everybody in, in the middle, and then we scream, we scream out for help, and we scream to the government. The government gives us the plan that they set in motion from the very outstart. They control both sides. This is why Ron Paul and other people that brought up issues were dangerous to this particular system unless they was paid and bought off and made promises that they never planned to keep. So number 12, to introduce new cults and continue to boost those already functioning, which include uh, rock music, uh, rock music gangsters, they call them. And then this is where Tavistock Institute comes into play because of what uh, they set in motion with music and vibratory frequencies and tones and what they plan to do to, uh, to demoralize young people's uh, morals, to dehumanize young people with listening to music. They even said this in documents that they have laid out. And by the way, he on record worked for British intelligence on record, I mean, it's on record, and th th he was told this there. That's how he knew this when he wrote the Committee of 300. It's got to be more than 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Wow, and man, I, and, and I've totally forgotten about Dr. Michael Kaufman, or, or Coleman. There's also Dr. Michael uh, Kaufman, who we've had on to expose this Agenda 21. Dr. John Coleman, you can uh, watch videos of him online. Just type in his name. We ought to do some excerpts on the nightly news. revolution attacks humans from all sides. See, people are like, well, why is the government run Al-Qaeda, but Al-Qaeda is also killing us? They just finance gangster leaders. Brzezinski's written like three books just calling it gangsterism. That's what Professor Griff had just gotten to, where it's criminals. And the, the, and the heads of Al-Qaeda are just criminals, not the guys they say they're killing. But most of the time, they're not even really killing them in drone strikes. They're doing drone strikes that's come out just to make the Pakistani people revolt and take over the government and put radicals in. I mean, it's sophisticated, folks. They flew tens of thousands of Taliban and Al-Qaeda out of Afghanistan. Our government did into Pakistan. That was even in the Financial Times of London. Nobody got in trouble for it. We're going to go back to Professor Griffin. I promise he's on to take your calls. He'll graciously stay with us some into the next hour before Dr. Steve Pachinik, former head of Black Ops for the State Department, and psychological warfare who said the bin Laden thing was fake. Now mainstream news is coming out admitting there's like three, four, five different uh, versions of that. He'll be on the last 30 minutes. Okay, Professor Griff, I, I want to go to these calls, but I'm telling you, you're laying out such hardcore info that I remember reading the goals of the Illuminati 20 years ago and, and knowing how accurate it was and interviewing Coleman so many times. And then now it's all coming true, and we and but now it's out in the open. It's like the headlines are what he talks about. So finish up with those points, and then let's go to the phone calls. I'm going to move real quick. Thirteen to continue to build up the cult of Christian fundamentalism, beginning with uh, beginning by the British East Indian Company. Uh, Fourteen to press for the spread of religious cults such as the Muslim Muslim Brotherhood. That sounds familiar. Didn't we hear about them a few years ago? And this document was written 20-something years ago? And British Intel created them, yeah. Exactly. 15, to export religious liberation.
generation ideas around the world so as to undermine all existing religion. 16, to cause a total collapse of the world's economy. We're going to get back to that one. I have something to say about that, especially dealing with America. Uh, to take control of all foreign and domestic policies of the United States. To give the fullest support to support 18. To give the fullest support uh, to strip of national institutions such as the United Nations. <laughs> the IMF, International Mother, I mean, International Monetary Fund, excuse me, that was a Freudian slip. Um, the Bank of International Settlements and World Court, 19, to penetrate and subvert all government and work from within to destroy sovereignty and sovereign integrity of the nation. <laughs> 20, we're almost at the end, to organize a worldwide terrorist apparatus and to negotiate with terrorists whenever terrorist activities take place. Last but not least, to take control of education in America with the intent and purpose of utterly and completely destroying it. Those are the 21 goals written by Dr. Coleman in the book Committee of 300, dealing with the 21 goals of the Illuminati. That's right, and, and everybody should get that book. I think it's still available. We should carry it. I mean, I, I read it close to 20 years ago, I think about 96 or so. And people also uh, need to, uh, it's up at educate-yourself.org. They've, they've got a link to some of the text. We're going to mirror it over at Infowars.com. Uh, Don Salazar is posting it right now on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com because absolutely that is such key information that you pulled out of the memory hole here today, Professor Griff. You wanted to go back uh, to a few of the points in there and then we'll go to calls. Let me just say this one last thing. Give me 30 seconds. There was an essay written by a young lady named um, Nicole Terry. Hopefully, hopefully she's listening and she doesn't mind us pulling her work up. Essay is explaining what has happened to this world. She said, what would happen to someone who played a major role in the discovery and publication of the following facts? Number one, the IRS is not a U.S. government agency. Number two, the IMF is an agency of the U.N. Number three, the U.S. Um, had not had a treasury since 1921. Number four, the U.S. Treasury is now the IMF. Five, the United States um, does not have, not have any employees because there is no longer uh, a United States. Six, the Alphabet Boys, the FCC, CIA, FBI, NASA, and the rest of the Alphabet Gang were never part of the United States to begin with. Seven, the Social Security numbers are issued through the UN, through the IMF. Eight, there are no judicial courts in America because there has not been since 1789. Um, nine, there have not been any judges in America since 1789. Uh, Eleven, we have one world government, one law, one world monetary system. Twelve, the UN is a one world super government. There's 21 of them, but I want to stop uh, right there and take, your, take the callers' calls. Sure, and you're going to stay a little bit with us in the next hour so you can lay out more knowledge for people, but... Uh, briefly, and then we will go to calls. We have an article in Infowars.com, robo-reporters who replace mainstream journalists. So now the government corporation puts out a press release. A robo-writer re-scrambles it, but it's the same propaganda, and then puts a fake name on it. They're going to have gnome de plumes, pen names, and then they're going to just get rid of the little government repeaters that just repeat whatever the government says anyway. I, I mean, this is crazy. If you notice now, they're even now saying we may not even have press conferences anymore. We may have a virtual president uh, where it's a hologram. I mean, they are overthrowing reality. This thing is now starting to move really qu quick, Professor Griff. What's your take on the whole technocracy? I think it's, 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 it's almost mind-numbing simply because uh, I watched this gentleman, uh, Will I Am, of the group Black Eyed Peas, um, support and, and write songs and this kind of thing for Barack Obama. He even admitted that uh, because of the hologram, he ended up in, in four and five different locations at one time. Shortly after that, they did a concert, I believe, at Coachella, and they brought Tupac out on the stage via the hologram. And this blew a lot of people away. And then they even admitted in certain documents on the internet that they were going to start having hologram concerts. You could see Otis Redding and, and Whitney Houston and 
Heavy D and some of the other artists that have transitioned and passed on, now we can see them now in concert by a hologram. It is mind-numbing, simply because we, uh, a lot of people um, that I talk to on a daily basis, I say young people, they don't know uh, reality, reality from non-reality. A lot of people's re non-reality has become their reality. If an artist sit in the studio and craft a song, just a song that comes out of his imagination, by the time it is the sacred airwaves and the video comes out, a young person listening to that particular song views that as their reality. But it's not real. Most people I know now, when you go to the Target or any store, it's all about virtual reality, these games. People pay money to have a Ferrari in an imaginary world. They pay to have a girlfriend. And then people actually start worshiping them with a status because they have the illusion, this is the Wizard of Oz world eating the real world. Yes. Yes. I asked the question earlier, does art imitate life or does life imitate art? And we know they're they're using artificial art to then create the life they want. They're they're, they're feedback looping us. They're they're force feeding us all this. Exactly. And the truth is, if people watch my breakdown of Prometheus, uh, they really believe they are the descendants of aliens, and that we're the profane and have to be exterminated. Uh, it's just all so bizarre. And whether it's real or not, folks, they believe it. They're crazy. They're in charge because we stand down and let them rule. Because we don't have this arrogant desire to dominate everything. So, wow, heavy show today. So glad to have Professor Griff here with us. Mike in Oregon, got a lot of great questions here. Uh, Mike, Freddie, James, Boren, uh, Vitold. We're going to get to all of you. Mike, you're on the air with Professor Griff. Go ahead. Uh, hey, thanks a lot for having me today. You bet, buddy. Go ahead. Oh, on the, the holographic subject, I thought I was funny. They probably going to have like an Obama one Kenobi type deal where it like tells you when to turn on and off the lights, tells you what to eat and whatnot. You think? No, that's actually THX 1138 is off of Brave New World, which Aldous Huxley said is their actual plan. So go watch that George Lucas 1973 film with Robert Duvall, and that's what they're planning, if you're lucky. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, and... The uh, video game subject with the violent video games, I was reading some where the high schools and the middle schools want to get a, like a poll of all the kids using video games, and then they want to put them on a, like an anger management type program, saying that they all could potentially be Adam Lanzas, and that we all need to get them hooked on psychotropics and all sorts of stuff. No, no, I hear you. No, no, let's get Professor Griff's take on that. Yeah, the public... They're saying they're going to put the so-called Colorado shooter on truth serum to make him tell the truth when that's actually what you use to mind control him. And the guy's under a DARPA mind control program, just like it's admitted that the Unabomber, Theodore Kaczynski, was in MK Ultra. I mean, that's in the L.A. Times, and then no one says, hey, we should investigate if he was mind control. And then they assign the same mind control doctor, the second most famous in world history, to be McVeigh's doctor. I mean, it's all hidden in plain view. Professor Griff, you know, 10 years ago, we talk about Al-Qaeda being globalist run. Now they just admit it. Well, why do you think they're just coming out in the open with everything? I think simply because the, uh, the plan that they set in motion have, uh, have set up uh, its base already in the hearts and the minds of the people. We're at the phase of this thing where the people uh, are crying out and clamoring for this whole idea of change. This is one of the reasons why the Obama deception too is very important, simply because now we get a chance to come back and let the people know, look, we said this and started doing this prior to Obama becoming president. Look at what's been going on. Look what is going on right now so that we can lay out the plan what's about to happen. And if people don't want to go along with it and believe it, listen, that's on them. This what's been laid out by people that are watching this thing and uh, that's right. no one, un no one understands. That's right. This is a fact. Whether you know, People act like that's your opinion. No, no. I mean, if you jump off a thousand-foot cliff without a parachute, you're going to die. This is, what we're saying here is not our opinion. The globalists are bragging. We're telling you what's public. That's what's so frustrating. It drives me crazy. Exactly. And this, is, this, this next quote is very, very public. This is the best quote. Zbigniew Brzezinski, November 17, 2008. He said, I once put it rather bluntly, and I was flattered that the British uh, Home Secretary re 
repeated this as follows. Namely, in earlier times, it is easier to control a million people. Literally. It was easier to control a million people than physically to kill a million people. Today, it is, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. He said it's easier to kill than to control. This is the big new Brzezinski. He put that out in his new book. Uh, that's in his new book. I read most of it. I scanned through it. It's a big book that came out about six months ago. And, and he says the people are waking up. This may upset our plan. And he's not just saying that plan possum. The good news is we've pushed him back about 10 years, ladies and gentlemen. And if you just believe we can beat them, and if we just figure out their divide and conquer, we can come together and beat this thing. Let's talk to Sally uh, in California. Then we're going to go to Freddie and others. Sally, uh, you're uh, on the air uh, with Professor Griff. Go ahead. Yes, I have a question with Dr. Griff. How to get African Americans more involved in New World Order? I think, I think what we need to do is uh, have courage enough to speak truth to power. Um, I think we need to tap into the great me instead of worrying about the little me things. Um, I think we need to do things that that, that resonate um, with African Americans, but that resonate with Black people and speak their language. Public Enemy does has done that particular work. Um, and I think this is why it was the people that voted for Public Enemy to go into the rock and roll all of them. We did it via hip hop because that's the vibratory frequency that we felt we could use, the medium that we could use to reach black people. Now, we can call all we want to. Whether people come or not, that is entirely up to the people. Speaking truth to power, as Alex Jones will tell you, is definitely not an easy thing, but we don't mind doing it. There's a price to be paid for this. Are you following me? James Brown said, um, people are talking loud, but they ain't saying nothing. And it's, very, and it's very critical that you speak a person's language. If you go to speak um, to our Latino brothers and sisters, you have to be able to speak their language to, to resonate with them. If you're going, if you're going to speak to African Americans, I mean, we're all over the place. We have to be able to speak the language and speak truth to power. Well, I've actually found uh, statistically, black folks are easier to wake up to the new world order than probably any other group because they've already been shafted so much in it, and they recognize what you know, the system they've already seen. But like everybody else, they'll go. Yeah, I get it's bad, but I still like Obama because it makes me feel good. They like choose to go back into the matrix. Exactly, and, 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 and the reason why, uh, Alex, simply because we've been fed this, this, this feel-good uh, term for a minute, simply because that's what goes on every Sunday in the black community. It's a feel-good kind of thing. With one or two commercials and a couple of songs by a couple of corny, corny rappers, um, oh, it's a rap. All right, Sally, thank you. Let's jam in one more, and we'll come back after the break and get more into this. Uh, let's talk to uh, Freddie in Texas. Well, let's do this after the break. He wants to have a question. Uh, get your opinion on Louis Farrakhan. Uh, so we'll get that. Uh, Selena wants to talk about the Koch brothers. Uh, Michael Paul or Michelle Paul wants to talk about populations. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Professor Griff is our guest. Uh, excellent website, pgriff. Uh, dot info and he is keeping it real as they say that's my only goal be real and i know what's real got a bunch of mad scientists who think they're god and are going to become god running things and they're jacking my food my water they're trying to force gmo on me and my babies and man i i, I just am freaked out and we've got to get everybody awake to this to figure out some way forward the problem is they know our nature they know how to punch our buttons we've got to get outside the box and realize we're being gamed. Professor Griff has been a soldier long before I was trying to do that. We'll be right back with Professor Griff. Pro Pure is introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by Pro Pure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. 
it cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it. And out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine. Hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. You know, recently, Louis Farrakhan said some nice things about me. Uh, and, and, you know, Louis Farrakhan, growing up hearing him, he says a lot of stuff I totally agree with, exposes the Federal Reserve, other stuff. Gets off into some other areas, you know, that I don't totally agree with. But all I care about is that he's telling people don't be on drugs and don't trust the government. And that sounds like common sense to me. But that's my view of Louis Farrakhan. Uh, I don't, you know, really follow a ton of what he's doing because I'm too busy. But let's get Professor Griff's take on... Uh, well, I mean, Freddie, you go ahead and ask the question. I just see it up there on the board, so I'm asking it for you, Freddie. Go ahead, ask your question. Thank you, Alex, and I love you, man. I'm a black man saying to you, a lover of Farrakhan, I love you as a black man to a white man because Jesus' disciples came to him one day, and he asked him, when his mom and brothers wanted to speak to him, he said, who are my mothers and who are my brothers? And Jesus said, those who adhere to the word of God and put it into practice. And you more of a brother as a white man because you stand in the truth, stand for truth, and you're willing to speak truth to power more so than members of my own family who don't do that. But I just want well, to. I, I just want justice, and I know they're shooting people up with cancer viruses. And and and, and if I don't fight that, I'm signing on to it. Um, do, do you have a question for uh, for Professor yes, Griff? Uh, um, I, I want to ask Professor Griff, what do you think of uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan uh, yourself? And um, uh, again. Uh, I uh, agree with speaking the language of our people. Could you give me a couple of specifics? Because I'm about reaching our young people with this. And I sure, sure. Great, great question, Freddie. Thanks for holding. Uh, go ahead, Professor Griff. Well, that's a very, very broad general statement. That, that, that's a, a show within side of itself. Uh, uh, there's, there's so many things I could think, but I think the one thing that kind of hits home for me in reference to uh, Minister Lewis Park is the fact that I was that average kid in the hood in the street, getting into all kind of trouble, doing all kind of things. But I heard this brother speaking truth to power, which drew me to the nation of Islam. And I became a disciplined, studious, caring uh, father, brother, uncle, just all around a uh, good uh, human being. After going through the process of, uh, of the FOI, which is the fruit of Islam, the military training of men that belong to Islam, North America. All right, there goes your question answered right there. Let's jam in one more before this hour ends. Okay, let's go to Nick in California. Go ahead, Nick. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, I was calling about the Common Core um, education where the government's trying to control the education, and you were talking about Dr. Coleman and the 21 plan. Yes. Did you hear me? Man, you're on the air. Can you hear me? We're having a little bit of phone trouble. Yeah, which I can hear. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Sir, I can hear you. Okay, I was calling about the... Uh, uh, yeah, I heard you. The, oh, the Common Core plan. Yeah, the whole Agenda 21, you notice there's 21 goals, and he was in MI6 and exposed it more than 20 years ago because he thought it was such a horrible plan. Professor Griff is our guest, one of the founders of one of the top hip-hop rap groups ever, Public Enemy. pgriff.info is the website. Go on to your phone calls right now. And I wasn't trying to chastise the last caller, but I mean, you can hear the radio in the background. It's like, yeah, we want to hear you. And it's just, I've been doing rock radio almost 18 years. It drives me crazy. Uh, let's talk to uh, Michael Paul in Nebraska. You're on the air with Professor Griff. Go ahead. What's your question? Uh, I guess my question was about solutions. 
Uh, what do you think we could do to you know try and remedy this as quickly as possible? As quick as possible, I think it starts right here on the Alex Jones show with dialogue. And this is what I said the last time. Um, it is not worth this particular gentleman and this medium. You and I would probably, we don't operate in the same circle. You and I would never have this dialogue simply because if the, the plan and the agenda is, is working and it's, it's being carried out, um, it's designed for you and I to be at odds with one another. Oh, they admit with Google now, it makes you go to your little group. Exactly. So we can dialogue now, and we can come up with strategies and solutions. But can I tell you something, sir? Yes, go ahead, sir. I would never get the plan over an open line like this. We have to sit in closed meetings, study groups, um, to counter, uh, to come up with a plan to counteract the madness. Simply because we don't know who's listening to the Alex Jones show. And I want to say to, to the government agents that are out there, thank you all for tuning in also. We really appreciate you all for that. Well, listen, we talked about that off air. It's a great question. Do you have any other questions? Uh, no, sir. God, but God bless you. you know, people ask me, what is your solution? And I give out a lot of individual solutions. But one, number one, wake up, you know, snap your fingers, get out of the trance, look around you, don't believe us. People say, oh, I trust this person or I trust that person. Don't trust anybody. Verify, learn, see who you can really trust. Uh, it's not who's the fanciest or, you know, somebody says this guy's a bad guy and then there's no proof. That's all Cass Sunstein, cognitive infiltration. We've got to come together and realize there's no future if we don't. Uh, Professor Griff, sure, go ahead. Oh, no, that wasn't me. I think the caller didn't get hung up on when I said thanks for the call. They just hung up. Um, yeah, but I think we need to recognize the fact that it's about the human family. And, and as they said in the movie New Jack City, we all we got. So uh, I think it's the us against them kind of thing. And this has nothing to do with your complexion. And we need to understand that they're coming after us all. They are rolling out with a technocracy on record to replace us with machines, saying they're going to kill all of us. And that's the big issue. That should be the big enemy. In fact, maybe the flag should be black people, white people, brown people, red people, whatever, like with clubs beating a robot into pieces. Like all of us in a circle beating the robot and the all-seeing eye into pieces. And it's not that the robot itself's bad. That's going to be its tool because it'll follow orders. Right. I, I mean, isn't that the unifying thing right there, Professor Griff, is, is, to, is to realize that, as you've said? Right, I think, but that's what they're afraid of. So the plan is to uh, create these false flags and false fronts to keep us at odds with one another. And we, and we have to understand that. I spoke, I spoke in my book, The Acapella Revolution, about the vote scam. Did I not catch hell? Because black people feel that, okay, well, we fought and bled and died to have the right to vote. That doesn't necessarily mean the vote is going to work for you. We need to understand something. These people control both both parties. Until there's a third party, and until we just kind of overhaul the government, just kind of get rid of it and start over again, it's not going to work for any of us because they sure. control it. Sure. Well, I mean, people ask for solutions. Solutions are getting awake, having dialogue, communicating with people, getting out of your comfort zone. They want you in a house, watching the television, not even talking to your neighbors. You want to defeat the New World Order? Go ride a bike. You want to defeat the New World Order? Walk over to people that are different from you at a gas station and start warning them. I do that everywhere I go. My kids are like, oh, Dad, not again. I don't care. I go up and I warn everybody. We'll be right back. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro filtered sports bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw. The Crystal Quest shower filter system and the Aquapod Kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter.
posted in the tile section at the top of InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, 21 Goals of the Illuminati and the Committee of 300. And under it, uh, the last interview I think I did three, four years ago with John Coleman, who was in British Intelligence. And the last time I tried to get him on, he was ill and having to have surgery. Uh, I believe I'm going from memory, and so that's why we hadn't had him back on. I thought he was riding off into the sunset, but we should try to get him back on the show. Amazing information. Professor Griff was bringing that up today. I'm glad he did. Uh, it's very important. I want to take some final phone calls from Selena, David, Will, Mark, and Robert. Please have your question ready. But Professor Griff, uh, you've got some more knowledge. Professor Griff, uh, one of the founders of Public Enemy, being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, what is it, next month, uh, joins us now. Professor uh, Griff, again, here into the uh, second uh, hour of the interview with you, uh, ahead of Dr. Pachinik joining us with new Bin Laden hoax information here in about 30 minutes. Uh, break down that other information. Well, I was trying to explain to people um, through, the, through my book, The Acapella Revolution, I wrote a song entitled Elvis Kill Kennedy. And um, in the song, I kind of tell a story on how it goes into these, these false stories that the uh, that the media puts out. Um, and then tracking these stories down and finding out the truth. And by the time this happens, you, you've wasted, you've wasted uh, valuable time. So what I did in the book is I put the resources to let people know how we can kind of cut Chase. I talked about the IMF, IMF enslavement of black Africa. I talked about the United States uh, prison population hits an all-time high. I'm talking about the same people that run and control um, the high, the high, uh, the best to put on high in the music industry, also invest and have stock in private prisons. Um, I talk about the prison industrial complex. I talk about well, fluoride and we talk about heart, but we talk about um, different things in this particular chapter dealing with Elvis Kill Kennedy. This is one of the methods, I think a, a few calls ago asked this question. This is one of the methods that we use to awaken the masses uh, of the people. What better way to do it than to educate them through entertainment, as Clarence once said, who coined the phrase uh, edutainment. Uh, this is one of the ways that we use to kind of uh, wake up the masses of the people. Uh, it has to be put in a book form. It has to be put in an audio book. It has to be taught in universities on and offline. Um, this has to be the conversation in, in Starbucks or the, the average coffee shop. This has to be the conversation, these particular subjects that we bring up, um, not only on the Alex Jones show, but on other shows. Very well said. Professor Griff is our guest. Let's take some calls. Selena in California. You're on the air with Professor Griff. Go ahead. Hi, Professor Griff. Um, my question was, uh, I wanted to get your take on the Koch brothers, actually, um, how they're so they pretty much fund America's for prosperity and how um, they're trying to destroy Social Security and re re segregate the schools, and pretty much they fund Obama, and I just wanted to get your take on them. Anything that I could possibly say right now would be too premature. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Sherman, here's the deal. It's a meme that anybody that's pro-gun is a right-wing extremist racist funded by the Koch brothers. And the truth is they're a small Illuminati family spinoff, uh, newer money, uh, who one mafia group's about to basically push off the map. They've tried to take over conservatism as their own engine. And they're just a smaller mafia family, but we're actually doing a study on them because the entire fake left obsesses on them, and, and that's their conspiracy that they run the whole world. And so, uh, I mean, it's true. Uh, David Knight you know, was talking about uh, being up in the Carolinas, you know, living there, one of our reporters, and that all the major conservative groups he'd go to, you know, meetings and stuff, it was like Koch brother people there, you know, basically trying to take it over. So I've got him doing some research on that. I've been doing some research as well. So certainly they're involved in American conservatism. The original dad was part of the John Birch Society that, as far as I can tell, told a lot of true stuff about the New World Order and, uh, you know, got proven right. So uh, for whatever reason, the Illuminati wants to shut them down. Doesn't mean they're good overall, it, but, but they don't want to give up their refineries and coal. Okay, so you've actually got the, the, the globalists want to shut off our energy to control us. That's why they block real uh, alternative energy that Professor Griff was talking about. Professor Griff? Yes, I would like to, uh, I would like to put my uh, email address out there for me because a lot of times, when we are traveling, 
we don't have access. I mean, I know the internet is a beautiful thing, but a lot of times you need to touch and have communication uh, with people. They you need to talk to people face to face. When that question came up, I have a bomb um, of information, but I don't want to speak, you know, uh, too prematurely. So my my email address is Professor Chris P E at Gmail dot com. That's Professor Chris P E like public enemy at Gmail dot com, and my phone number is six seven eight five five seven two nine. One nine. I would definitely love to have people send me um, this particular information. Um, you know what I noticed uh, when I'm in communication with uh, the people that I speak with from outside of the United States? The information is, is vastly different. And it takes, it takes sometimes longer to cross-reference because a lot of times you don't want to get on the Alex Jones you know, just to sound intelligent and important and your information is incorrect. No, you're kicking butt, and, um, and and we're having a dialogue, getting people thinking. That's that's half the battle, and, and I think it's important. I think by people saying I work for the Koch brothers and stuff, and and almost creating you know like a uh, you know schizophrenia out there. I think it's good because then that makes me go research and realize there's a mafia battle going on. It's like I'm not for Assad, but they're trying to knock him off. He didn't do anything. That's evil in Syria. Don't take him out. Just like I'm against starting a war with Russia. Doesn't mean I endorse Putin. Right. And, and it's the same thing. Why are they trying to shut down the Koch brothers? Why are they trying to eradicate them? And it, it just shows these. Why did Boris Berevosky just get killed? I mean, clearly murdered the Russian oligarch. Uh, because, the, because these globalists, one thing they do at the highest levels, they do occasionally knock each other off. And I think that's what's holding them back. In fact, Brzezinski's talked about that, that they've got to have unity. And thank God they don't have perfect unity. That's one thing holding them up. Uh, let's talk to uh, Mark in Oregon. Mark, you're on the air with Professor Griff. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Mark. You're on the air with Professor Griff. Okay, Mark is gone. Let's talk to Robert in California. You're on the air with Professor Griff. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, how are you guys doing? Um, my question for Pro Professor Griff is mind control and how uh, the New World or Order likes to play people off of each other and um, also the new technology that actually emerged about two to three years ago uh, concerning brain gate technology <laughs> and how possibly the New World Order is also using that against um, people against off each other and possibly against people in Congress. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it came out in, in the 70s. They were using all sorts of mind control projection systems on people uh, in legislators. I mean, it's, it's incredible how far we're down the, the, the rat hole on this. Uh, Professor Griff? Yeah, let me ask you something, Alex. What was the name of the movie that came out? Uh, I think it, uh, matter of fact, I think it was a uh, little documentary film that they had talking about brain fingerprinting. And I think it, the, uh, the information went into the fact that if you committed a crime, they were able to take you in, strap you to this machine, and read your brain waves to see whether or not that particular crime is still in your brain. I forget the name of the movie, but I'm familiar with it. And, and it's also, you know, they're all... No, no, Minority Report is 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 pre-crime. This is and after... Paycheck, the movie Ben Affleck's Paycheck, I believe. They, That's right. They go in and use the laser to erase the memories. Right. It's Paycheck. Right, right, right. We have to be very, very um, careful and and now and not so narrow minded as to think they have maybe one to two methods on uh, pushing the whole mind control program on the masses of the people. Um, it's done several different ways, and the way I present it in the psychological covert war on hip hop is through the vibratory frequencies um, of music. Um, is what uh, Stephen Jacobson in his book. Um, Mind Control in America talked about when he talked about double speak, when he talked about backward masking. It's done in several, several different ways. We could sit and watch TV for an hour, come up uh, from off the couch playing armchair revolutionary, come up off the couch and not even know that we've been um, indoctrinated with certain things that sit in the Oh, listen, I can mind. tell when it's going on. I, absolutely. I can tell when something's really programming. Uh, and that's why I said watch the Dark Knight series be connected to shootings before it was all connected to both of them. Before, right. I, I mean, I, I said that because I know I, I, when I get physically ill, 
watching trailers and looking. I can tell my brain just knows when it's being programmed, and it's everywhere. And then there's overt stuff where they like, you know, the person that homeschools in every TV show is a terrorist or a racist or a criminal. I mean, there's open brainwashing and demonization, but there's also subliminal programming on record. Let's talk. Yeah, so, so to your caller, Robert, you need to probably just what me and Alex was talking about off the air. Just kind of come off the grid, unplug, get away from all electronics, all right, and just press the reset button. Press the Robert reset button from California. We all went down. Well, I mean, not we all. My son and and and, and Rob doing his son and my dad. We all took an RV down with Richard Reeves to Big Ben for four days, and. It, the cell phones don't work there. There's no civilization. And I felt like heaven. And it's because there's no frequency pollution. Right, right, right. Like I, I mean, all I want to do is go back there. I mean, I'm tempted to go move there, but I can't run. Sorry, go ahead. I was about to say, there's people right now that are listening that know how to align the chakras and cleanse the auric field. And I think that's what a lot of us need sometimes, especially if we're around these electronics all the time. These, these frequencies are bombarding the brain cells and, and the auric field. Well, they admit cell phones actually rattle loose the DNA strands in your mm -hmm. uh, cells. That's deep. It cuts them in two. You know what? We've got to do five more minutes. Can you do five more minutes, Griff? Yes, sir. All right, Bob. Got, callers, I'm doing it for you. John's got a question about guns in Chicago. Uh... Also, we'll talk to folks in New York, Maryland, and, and then that'll be it. John in Illinois, you want to talk about guns in Chicago. You're on the air. What's your question? I, uh, I just have a statement. Do you guys know that uh, in Chicago they're closing the schools and they're forcing gangs into other gang school territories? And wow. that's going to cause school shootings. Uh, I should know. I was convicted of a school shooting Try. Uh, uh, taking a gun into school. I was tried in a 50,000-volt shock device of a crime I didn't commit. I was put in Illinois, the Illinois prison system where they put me in the soy project where they did, tested the GMO soy on the on the prisoners. Oh, yeah, that's killing them, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, well, send me uh, a story about what happened to you. But, I mean, what, but, yeah, no, I mean, look at Chicago. They've taken the guns, so only the criminals and government have it, and it's a hellhole. I appreciate your call. Professor Griff, what's your take on that comment? There's like, my number's 400 million. 400 million guns. And you're talking about banning a certain particular rifle or, or, or clip. It is ridiculous. Well, bottom yeah. line, the, you notice the government's getting all these extra weapons, but they want mine. I'm telling you, now, buy more guns, folks. And we need good people with guns. Uh, Davon uh, in New York, you're on the air with Professor Griff. Go ahead. Hey, so I was calling because... I was assaulted last week by the NYPD. Um, they assaulted me and arrested me and claimed that I was resisting arrest. And my, my question was, um, was regarding what can we actually do to actually win against the NYPD because they made a, a lot of lies on me. Yeah, so the they, NYPD they is just legendarily bad. I've been arrested by them just peacefully protesting and they were making stuff up. And uh, it's just amazing that that is a giant gang of, uh, and they're not all bad, but the system is run by bad people on the top. Professor Griff, what do you do about that? It's, it's, it's good people in a, in, a, in a bad system, but we need to keep in mind that uh, the police are not the power structure. The police are being used by the power structure. And um, with what we just went through, as far as young black men are concerned with this stop and frisk, it's utterly ridiculous. I don't see why good, uh, good white um, Americans because listen, it's black people today, but who is it tomorrow? I've actually been stopped and frisked in 2004 at the RNC walking down the street and happened to our other guys. So you're right. They mainly do it to minorities, but now they're doing it exactly. They're just, they search cars randomly. It happens to my white friends in New York all the time. They just randomly do whatever they want now. I tell people all the time, once they come get Professor Griff in the morning, guess who they're coming for in the evening? That's right. Absolutely. That's what Tony Brown always says. What they test in the black community, you better believe is coming to your... T people, 
we, we talked about that before we went on air, how white people and, and folks think that they're part of the power structure, the boule, you know, Masonic black leaders. They all think they're part of the power structure. And I'm here to tell you, none of you are part of the power structure. What do you call that when you imagine you're running things when you aren't? Uh, you might call it a tea party, but um, I'm not sure what you call it in scientific terms. Uh, elaborate on that, because you've got the Republican version of the Tea Party, and then you've got the Ron Paul version, but yeah, the establishment Tea Party? No, I'm not talking about the establishment Tea Party. A lot of people, who is this, this Negro in the Tea Party, who thinks that these people, it's so funny, I can't even get it out, who thinks that these people accept him, and none of what these people are presenting um, will ever catapult him in the position that he feels he's going to be in. It's a trick. It's the yellow brick road syndrome, I call it. You ended up, you end up at Oz, and you pull the curtain back, and it's this character, this little short little, that little character running everything. Who would have thought? So I think we're propping up the Tea Party, they're exacerbating the tensions between black and white for this ultimate uh, racial showdown. Um, they pretend like the bobbleheads and the talking heads pretend like the Democrats are, uh, uh, versus the Republicans. Um, they have a gun issue, they have a gay marriage issue, the abortion issue, and um, we're being forced not only the question, but we're being forced the answers and the solution. Well no said. Being controlled by the same people. Absolutely. That's a good way to end it. I'll say bye to you in the break. Come back with Dr. Steve Pachinik with big breaking news. Professor Griff has uh, been our guest today, pgriff.info. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. Professor Griff, thanks for coming on with us. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs> By the way, he laid out their whole plan. He was in MI6. Uh, I think he's even still alive, but he's hard to get on. He's been ill. Uh, we, we need to get Dr. Coleman back on. Is he still alive? Yes, he is. Guys, get him on immediately. I keep forgetting. He's really hard to get on. He hadn't been on in about five years. Uh, but, but get him on immediately. Uh, yes, let's go over from an MI6 guy who 20 years ago laid out everything. I mean, I've got to say, no one... Has, and there's so many great people like him that you just forget about because they're not out front and center. B break down what he says their 21 goals are. Um, number one, real quick. Number one is to establish a one-world government, new world order, with a unified church and a monetary system. Under the direction of this one-world government, uh, they began to set up its, its church back between the 20s and the 30s. Now, this is something that they would uh, con control. Right? They would set up a church... Um, to body and channel these particular beliefs that they would come up with. And these are non-religious beliefs. That's number one. Number two, to bring about the utter destruction of all national identity and national pride. And chime in any time you would like, which was the primary consideration um, if the concept of the one world government, the new world order, was to work. So these things go hand they go hand in hand to establish a unified church and a monetary system and to, uh, to break down national um, identity. This gives birth to this impenetrable biomicrochip that everyone on the planet, walking, living, breathing, have to accept the chip. And now they openly say they want the troops, and the troops are already getting them, by the way, the special forces. All of this that was unbelievable 10 years ago is now in our face. Please continue. Exactly. Number three to engineer and bring about the destruction of religion, and more especially the Christian religion, with one exception, their own creation, as mentioned above. Number four, to establish the ability to control of each uh, and every person through means of mind control and what Sabine Brzezinski called technotronics, I believe, which would create human-like robots and a system of terror which would, which would make... Uh, these things uh, come about and be acceptable by the people via the mind control. You walk through Newark Liberty Airport, you'll, see, you'll hear robots talking to you, giving you directions. Um, and they're just and conditioning China. you and getting you ready, exactly. Exactly. So um, stop 
opening you up, uh, making you, uh, what's the word I want to use, more pliant, so to speak, to get you to, to accept instructions and authority from, from robots. Number five, to bring about the end of all industrialization and the production of nuclear generated electric, uh, electric power. By the way, he wrote this, he wrote this more than 20 years ago in one of his first books. And look, the post industrial zero growth society. See that? Keep going. Yes, exactly. Um, now, basically, what they're, what, they're, what they're doing is um, 20 years ago, you would almost think that, okay, if these things didn't, didn't take place, what's the problem? Well, you and I both know that the men that are operating behind the scenes call themselves men of coordinates. And they will pass this agenda down to the next generation if they don't succeed in their particular lifetime. They never so give they, up. Right, exactly. They, they don't. Um, the agenda does not stop. If you and I go on vacation to catch a little stutter somewhere, um, if, if they do, this the machine world keeps going. Um, they wanted to bring this uh, into fruition through NAFTA and other organizations and, and other programs that they have already set in motion. So if you look at um, if you look at the war on terror, when it talks about when it talks about uh, destroying the Taliban and other organizations that they helped create, it says in this particular document that um, the U.S. in the wake of industrial destruction will either become opium, heroin, heroin, and or cocaine addicts. This is what they plan are doing right now, unbeknownst to the troops that are fighting. Now, I know the government is listening, so we don't want to get charged with sedition. We're reading a document put out 20 years ago um, by John, Dr. John Coleman in the book, The Story of the Committee of 300. Number six, to encourage and eventually legalize the use of drugs and make pornography an art form. My question is, does life imitate art or does art imitate life? If you're going to make pornography an art form and then make it an art form to whom? Your little babies, my little babies? How does that work? It was like you know a nightmare. I was down in Galveston two weeks ago on a vacation. And the last day I was there, a convention of, of cheerleaders came, but it was little kids at a competition. And there were like 10-year-olds dressed like prostitutes everywhere. And they were being rude to my daughters because they thought they were there for the competition. And, I mean, I was it was freaking me out. In fact, we even came home a day early. I mean, they, people are training their daughters to be whores. Wow. Number seven, to bring about depopulation of large cities, according to the trial run carried out by Pol Pot, Pol Pot's regime in Cambodia. Um, and basically it says here, it's interesting to note that Pol Pot's genocidal plans were drawn up in the U.S. by one of the Club of Rome's research foundation and overseen by Thomas Indias. Now, this is very critical. A lot of these things are done right from the United States of America. Number eight, to suppress all scientific development except for those deemed beneficial by the Illuminati. So if, 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 if that is true, then we can roll our minds back just a few years ago to them, not a few years ago, in and around the mid-80s uh, when the electric car was given birth to, and they sat on the electric car. Simply because the, uh, the multinational corporations that control the oil and the gas did not want the electric car to hit the streets just yet. So here we are, 2011, 12, and 13, just now seeing the electric car. You see, they killed the electric car because maybe it gets 85 uh, miles per gallon, so to speak, and they didn't want that on the streets yet. Absolutely. We've got to go get... On, on, on car lots, there are millions of, of gas-guzzling trucks and cars that are sitting there. Professor Griff's our guest. Stay there, sir. We're going to come back, finish up with the goals, and then go to your phone calls with Professor Griff, uh, one of the founders of Public Enemy, their minister of information, laying it out and reminding me about Dr. John Coleman. Wow.
I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cysts, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Professor Griff of pgriff.com. Functioning, which include uh, rock music, uh, rock music gangsters, they call them. And then this is where Tavis Park Institute comes into play because of what uh, they set in motion with music and vibratory frequencies and tones and what they plan to do to uh, to demoralize young people's uh, morals, to dehumanize young people with listening to music. They even said this in documents that they have laid out. And by the way, he on record worked for British intelligence on record. I mean, it's on record. And he was told this there. That's how he knew this when he wrote the Committee of 300. It's got to be more than 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Wow, man. I, and, and I've totally forgotten about Dr. Michael Kaufman, or, or Coleman. There's also Dr. Michael uh, Kaufman, who we've had on to expose his Agenda 21. Dr. John Coleman, you can uh, watch videos of him online. Just type in his name. I think we ought to do some excerpts on the nightly news. revolution attacks humans from all sides. See, people are like, well, why does the government run Al-Qaeda, but Al-Qaeda is also killing us? They just finance gangster leaders. Brzezinski's written like three books just calling it gangsterism. That's what Professor Griff had just gotten to, where it's criminals. And the, the, and the heads of Al-Qaeda are just criminals, not the guys they say they're killing. But most of the time, they're not even really killing them in drone strikes. They're doing drone strikes that's come out just to make the Pakistani people revolt and take over the government and put radicals in. I mean, it's sophisticated, folks. They flew tens of thousands of Taliban and Al-Qaeda out of Afghanistan. Our government did into Pakistan. That was even in the Financial Times of London. Nobody got in trouble for it. We're going to go back to Professor Griffin. I promise he's on to take your calls. He'll graciously stay with us some into the next hour before Dr. Steve Pachinik, former head of Black Ops for the State Department, and psychological warfare who said the bin Laden thing was fake. Now mainstream news is coming out and admitting there's like three, four, five different uh, versions of that. He'll be on the last 30 minutes. Okay, Professor Griff, I, I want to go to these calls, but I'm telling you, you're laying out such hardcore info that I remember reading the goals of the Illuminati 20 years ago and, and knowing how accurate it was and interviewing Coleman so many times. And then now it's all coming true, and we and but now it's out in the open. It's like the headlines are what he talks about. So finish up with those points, and then let's go to the phone calls. I'm going to move real quick. Thirteen to continue to build up the cult of Christian fundamentalism, beginning with uh, beginning by the British East Indian Company. Uh, Fourteen to press for the spread of religious cults such as the Muslim Muslim Brotherhood. That sounds familiar. Didn't we hear about them a few years ago? And this document was written 20-something years ago? And British Intel created them, yeah. Exactly. 15, to export religious liberation ideas around the world so as to undermine all existing religions. 16, to cause a total collapse of the world's economy. We're going to get back to that one. I have something to say about that, especially dealing with America. Um, to take control of all foreign and domestic policies of the United States. To give the fullest support to support.
Part 18 to give the full support uh, to strip of national institutions such as the United Nations, <laughs> the IMF, International Mother, I mean International Monetary Fund. Excuse me, that was a Freudian slip. Um, the Bank of International Settlements and World Court 19 to penetrate and subvert all government. Like the power. But the question is, what is the power? You've got to discover what controls the system to really get through all the layers if you're going to try to build a better civilization and a future for humanity. Because we know the establishment that's taken control certainly uh, does not even see humanity in their future. And coming up later in the hour, I'll talk about the technocracy with Professor Griff, one of the founding members of one of the most legendary and still popular, one of the most popular hip-hop slash uh, rap groups out there, Public Enemy, pgriff.info, P and then Griff, for, for, for Professor Griff.info. And he's going to be with us for the hour today to take phone calls. And uh, I want to give the number out if you specifically have a question. It can be all over the map. That's what I love about the wild card aspect of this. We don't screen your calls. In fact, that's why people call in on whatever issue they want. But, but when I do say it's for a guest, it's for the guest. Address your question to him. 800-259-9231. Uh, 800-259-9231 800-259 today. Uh, and he joins us. Of course, many of you also know him, even if you're not a connoisseur of some of the better uh, hip hop and rap out there, like I've been growing up uh, in Dallas, Texas, uh, then you know him from the Obama deception that, that, that we were producing before Obama even got into office. And you know, he says, you know, just because you get a black president, people think everything's gonna be all right. Well, no, it's not gonna be all right. Just like a lot of conservatives think you get Bush in, he's gonna save you and he runs over you because it's not about that. It's about total control. They're now coming out, we're gonna talk about this, with computers that are gonna write the news articles and fully replace humans pre-programmed with an official story that then they write in different uh, variations. That's why the press corps won't even be needed. A virtual president, all of it. So now it won't be a president reading off a globalist written teleprompter. It will be a virtual computer program of the president. Where the president won't have to travel. See, the new carbon tax will be the global prison where you can't travel anywhere. You have to get authorizations to travel. This is a nightmare. A nightmare, and they want us all fighting with each other over race, religion, all this stuff. And when they get people fighting over that, it becomes real. Even if you don't want to hate somebody, they hate you because of your religion or your race or what you look like or where you came from. So how do you transcend that? How do you get past the divide and conquer? Because if we don't do that, we're dead. It's the eugenics program, the extermination program. Professor Griff, uh, out of the gates, what do you want to talk about first today before we go to these phone calls? What is front and center uh, in your mind and your deep research and all the books you've got coming out that are so popular that are available, I should add, at pgriff.info. Um, first, I want to say thank you for having me on once again. As promised, we're back, uh, we're back once again for the second time. And I want to thank you listening since the last time. Um, the support, I received some things in the mail from some people, some further information, and um, it's a beautiful thing. So once again, thanks for having me. But the, the thing that's on my mind um I received some information about a gentleman um, in the so-called uh, in, in hip hop or rap. Um, now, this particular gentleman, he uh, murdered someone simply because he thought this particular now this, this person that he murdered was his friend, and he thought if he murdered his friend, that it would kind of appease the, the quote unquote Illuminati, and he would be accepted in the Illuminati because he thought that this person would be his blood human sacrifice. Now this disturbed me, so I said to myself, what is it that I'm not saying to make this very, very clear about the Illuminati being 13 bloodlines? So I went back into the book and I said to myself, maybe I... Info, founder of Public Enemy, their minister of information, touring the country, about to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here. Uh, very, very soon. Uh, and he joins us right now. I promise we'll get to your calls in the next segment. He'll go with us a little bit in the next hour. He's been gracious to do that. He's speaking to a university after that at, I, I guess, three, so he's got some time 
Uh, I haven't even asked him where he's at right now. Uh, Griff, where are you right now? Right now I'm in Kansas City, uh, Missouri, at Missouri Western State University. You're in Missouri. Uh, awesome. There's um, a little bit of echo on your phone now. Do me a favor and try to talk right into the receiver. Yeah, it's a little muffled, but it, it, it's okay. Uh, just, uh, just, just keep rolling with this key knowledge from Dr. John uh, Coleman. This is real info uh, that you're laying out, and and, and I'd forgotten about it because it's it's 20 years old, uh, but and, and it's all coming true. Keep going. Well, I'll let off at number nine. Number nine to cause by means of limited wars in the advanced countries by means of starvation and disease in the third world country. The death of three billion and B billion. People by the 2050, uh, people they call useless eaters. As you and I talked uh, about, this is not useless black eaters. This is not useless white eaters. These are useless eaters, period. Because they're not going to differenti differentiate between you and I. All right, so useless eaters. The Committee of 300 Illuminati Commission by Cyrus Vance to write a paper on this subject of how to bring about such genocide. The paper was produced under the title Global 2000 Report. And this is very critical. Uh, under the uh, accepted and approved by the actions of the former president, James Earl Carter. This is very critical. Um, and we need to note here, um, the big Brzezinski was involved, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Number 10, to weaken the moral fiber of the nation and to demoralize workers in the labor class by creating mass unemployment. And not only unemployment, but underemployment, to the point where you're not going to be qualified because of the, uh, the, uh, the advanced technology dealing with robots. You're not going to be qualified to get a job. You're going to be... Uh, unemployable and jobs dwindle due to the post uh, industrial zero growth policy introduced by the Club of Rome. Here's the Club of Rome once again. Um, uh, these people plan to put this in effect and they've been doing it um, through the institutions like uh, Stanford Research and uh, Tavistock Institute, as I mentioned in, uh, in my lecture. Moving down, skipping down to number 11, to keep people everywhere from deciding their own destiny by means of one created crisis after another, and then managing such crisis. We talked last time about the Hegelian dialectic principle. Uh, we talked about um, uh, this, this system that we're under, this, this two-party system, two wings of the same damn bird. I call them the Republicrats, the Republicans and the Democrats, all controlled by the same people. And then they managed these particular crises. I believe it was David Rockefeller who said we're on the verge of a global transformation. And we need, and all we need is the right major crisis, and the nations will accept the new world order. This is David Rockefeller. You're right, the right catalyzing event, and the nations will beg for the new world order. Exactly. So as the left challenges the right and squeeze everybody in, in the middle, and then we scream, we scream out for help, and we scream to the government. The government gives us the plan that they set in motion from the very outstart. They control both sides. This is why Ron Paul and other people that brought up issues were dangerous to this particular system.